another technique of dealing with trad is to spray it. Uh, and we use a herbicide called Starain. So I'll just go give you an idea of, of how that happens. Obviously, when you're using a, a powerful herbicide, you need to have protective equipment. So I'll get into that and then we can demonstrate the actual spraying process. <laughs> This is the result of a spraying operation on a sward of Tradescantia. You can see that the majority of it is, is dead. The leaves have, have completely been killed. But if I pull up one of these, well that one's pretty dead. But this one has still got roots on it. Uh, there are also, in here, there are green leaves. Uh, and this is what happens because this has been a particularly dense area of trad. So the leaves which were up here have, have been killed, but they've protected the leaves that were underneath. So these leaves that are underneath are able to regenerate themselves without any trouble at all and we've still got live root systems on these stems with green leaves so what's happened here has been a, a temporary setback for Tradescantia, nothing much more than that. Uh, as I said before, this is perhaps what we want uh, in the Trad Mitigation Project, uh, so this would be a, an acceptable result. My name is Jane Hollands, I'm a member of Friends of Sassafras Creek and have become involved in Quad just through the need of talking to other environment groups. I'm really amazed at the progress Quad has made and I'm really so pleased that we're going to be looking for trad and treating it and also for the biologic control part of the program is, is very, very exciting. I see whenever I go out into the forest the effect that trad has in blanketing the native vegetation and also on removing it and hand weeding small areas you can just see the ferns and the other plants that are really struggling for life underneath and it's a really wonderful feeling when they're a bit freed and you can look, go back a few weeks later and actually see the results of your work. Um, I believe that the way that Quad is approaching this by working with private landowners and um, to help them with their land and to help educate them is a really good way of going. I have done a little bit of work of weed facilitating um, on the Moor Break project where we um, talk to private landowners in an area 
next door to Sherbrook Forest where there had been funding from the council to do some works there and was really pleased with the progress and pleased with the works that we did and I really see that this is a good way forward and look forward to working on the project. Hi, I'm Glenn Brooks MacMillan. I'm the Landcare Facilitator for the Southern Rangers Environment Alliance. I'm also going to be project managing this um, TRAD mitigation project in the Dandenongs. So I just want to touch on a couple of the aspects of the project and um, the targets of which we're trying to reach. And hopefully over the three years we can uh, introduce new techniques, new methods to, to mitigate this, uh, this weed. And as you've meant, heard from Bill, um, this isn't about totally eradicating TRAD, it's about mitigating it, managing it, trying to control it in readiness for a biological control. So the project itself uh, is over three years. Uh, it's funded purely around $150,000, $160,000 a year. And we'll break that up into probably three different areas that we want to work on. The main priority for, for assessing uh, TRAD and, and trying to mitigate its uh, impact will be around cool, temperate rainforest EVCs. So we'll be doing some extensive mapping early on in the project to try and understand where these uh, areas are and then highlight um, potential project sites. After those uh, areas, we'll be looking at um, headwaters of creeks um, as we feel that's a very important area to look at for, for mitigating uh, TRAD. And the third area, uh, if resources are still available, is we'll be just looking at general creek, creek lines and, and other areas that we haven't looked at over the three years. So essentially the project is designed to work collaboratively with existing agencies who are doing work with TRAD. Uh, that includes Melbourne Water, um, Yarra Rangers Council, Cardinia Council, um, and obviously Parks Victoria and DEPI. So we don't want to cover the same old ground. We're trying to use these resources to hit areas that um, we haven't hit before. So we'll be collaborating quite consistently with those groups and trying to share resources. And therefore the mapping becomes very important in the early stages of this project. Once we get, a, a, I guess, an agreement by all parties about where this money should be spent, um, we'll, we'll then start to instigate teams to go out and start managing those areas. I spoke about the on-ground works and how uh, we've been working collaboratively with agencies uh, to get the mapping right. What we've found obviously in these areas is uh, there's a lot of work on public land, uh, which we're probably not going to expend too much of this budget on, on public land. What we're trying to concentrate is the, public, uh, the private land. Uh, these are private properties adjoining public land um, that we feel needs uh, assistance and certainly through Melbourne Water we'll be trying to get their river stream frontage programs in place as well. So we'll be forming neighbourhoods. Uh, these are areas uh, adjoining these national parks and, and high valued areas. Um, and these, these neighbourhoods uh, will obviously have one, two, three, maybe four people in those streets that we'll be targeting to try and get some work done on their Tradescantia. Hopefully over time those properties can then share their learnings with their neighbours and hopefully over time we'll get a few more people on board. These neighbourhoods will have um, local facilitators that will go out, door knock, try and talk to people, trying to raise awareness about this weed and hopefully help them um, develop management plans for their properties so that they can mitigate the Tradescantia on their properties. So as you can imagine, over three years, we'll be trying to build those uh, networks and hopefully cover a fair bit of ground. And again, we'll be concentrating on those three areas. That's the, um, the cool temperate rainforest areas, the, the, the high valued headwaters for the waterways, and then obviously other areas that we feel become priority as well. Now, these budgets are uh, designed, as Bill said earlier in the, in the piece, it's not about eradicating TRAD, it's about managing. So a lot of this could be about communication, raising awareness with people, showing them different techniques. Uh, we've spoken about hand removal, we've spoken about um, spraying and raking. Uh, there might also be other techniques like putting plastic over it, um, even chooks do a bit of a, a job on them as well. So hopefully um, we can come up with some real practical ways that landowners can manage trad. 
once this project gets moving, um, we're hoping that um, we, we form these neighbourhoods that then start to understand what um, Trascantia looks like firstly, um, whether it's spreading, and then once the biological control comes along, we have some really important people who can measure and report back how that um, particular program is progressing. Another key output of the project is uh, photo points so that we can see what, uh, what has happened throughout the project. So we'll be establishing uh, significant areas of, um, of project sites where we can have um, photo points that we can look back on throughout the project. After year one, uh, we'll also have a session where we bring um, experts together and people who have been participating in the program and we'll just have a good old um, review of the project and just see if some of the practices that we've been undertaking have actually been working and maybe uh, improve on those and maybe exclude some of those that are just not being efficient. Okay, so I mentioned about neighbourhoods and getting um, property owners on board. Um, that's a key output of this project. We're, we're looking at getting, um, you know, 20, maybe 30 properties on board um, and so that we can raise their awareness so that they can share it with their neighbourhoods. So we'll have community events to try and invite people along, try and raise awareness. Um, we'll have training days. And um, another part of this project is not about just eradicating or what I meant is the management of TRAD, um, but also the, the control of TRAD will be through some revegetation works as well. So there'll be some areas that we've selected that um, we'll be putting some plants in the ground and we have specific targets to reach for that as well. So this project, uh, as I said, will be over three years and I look forward to working closely with uh, agencies and, and local landowners. My job's actually easy at the end of the day. I'm only project managing it. What's difficult is getting people on board, getting private property owners active, and, um, and I really look forward to seeing what initiatives we can implement. Let's talk about the, the TRAD program. There are, there are two phases to this program. The first is the introduction of biological controls to control TRAD. And these, these controls are available to us from New Zealand and the New Zealanders uh, got them from the home of TRAD, which is Brazil in South America. And the, the insects that they brought across are the organisms which control the spread of TRAD in its home location. So what we're doing is introducing controls for TRAD which control them at home. But what we have to ensure is that those insects uh, and a fungus which is also going to be introduced is that they don't affect our native flora and this process is carried out under quarantine so the quarantine experts grow some trad uh, and they introduce the insects to it and they also introduce the insects to uh, specimens of our, our native flora just to ensure that the, the flora that uh, exists here with TRAD is not affected by the biological controls. When that process is completed satisfactorily the biological controls will be released in the wild as they have been in New Zealand and in New Zealand, the insects and the fungus have shown that they can live in the wild and uh, consume trad. Uh, hopefully, that will lead to its control. The second leg of this trad program is what we call a trad mitigation program. Uh, the, the reason for this is that it will take several years to test and release the biological controls. And in this period, we've, we've, we've uh, been given funds to reduce the, the problem of TRAD using our existing techniques. So the, the techniques we ha that we have are to uh, remove TRAD manually 
uh, to rake it and to spray it. Now, the difference is that in this situation, we're not trying to completely eliminate trad. What we're trying to do is just mitigate the effects of trad in the interim period until biological controls are available to use. So that's a brief rundown on our TRED control program and the treatments we're going to apply. The program is being funded by the federal government and the money is coming to us on the ground through the community weed action of the Dandenongs network. If you'd like to know more about the program, you can talk to myself, Bill Incoll. Uh, my phone number is 9756 6977. Or you can talk to Glenn Brooks McMillan. He's the facilitator of the community weed action for the Dandenongs network. And you can reach uh, the, the quad group, as we call it, via our website which is easily found if you search, do a Google search on community void action of the Dandenongs. Happy hunting!